Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord is a strategy action role-playing game developed and published by Tailworlds Entertainment. Released as a prequel to 2008's Mountain Blade, Bannerlord released in early access to players in March of 2020, quickly becoming one of the biggest launches of the year with nearly 250,000 players on Steam. But now, two years later, the full release of this much-anticipated game is upon us, as we take a deep dive into its action-packed world of warring medieval factions to see what it has to offer players today as we pick up the reins and march into battle. Okay, drinking mead before the battle is never happening again. My name's Mitch Mannix, and this is a look into the full release version of Mountain Blade 2, Bannerlord. As always, our journey begins at the character creator, with Bannerlord sporting a decent amount of customization options to craft your would-be ruler of the kingdom. With a number of factions to choose from, granting respective bonuses, as well as even a set of choices to cover your character's origin story. Again, with bonuses to stats, as well as getting to meet your parents, even if one of them clearly didn't enjoy being in the family photo. Uh... With such a cutthroat world awaiting us, we will truly need a mighty hero for this journey. So of course, we call upon the one and only, Ralph the Slightly Damp. A man that remains constantly damp, but never knowing exactly why. Could it be his own sweat? The blood of his enemies? Or maybe simply the idea of smashing some skulls exciting him a little too much. With our walking fridge freezer confirmed, we begin in the game's tutorial zone, getting a chance to try out the game's mounted combat, suddenly reminding me of Elden Ring for some reason, as we set about waging war against the locals' prized pottery collections, as well as with ground combat practice, stepping into the ring with a trainer that is more than likely rapidly regretting his life choices. No. Mountain Blade uses a multi-directional system found in a number of medieval set combat titles, with the initial combat at least feeling impactful and enjoyable from the officer. After trying out a number of alternative weapons, we set off from the tutorial in search of our lost family members following the game's plotline. A plotline which is intentionally quite simplistic, and acts more of a longer form tutorial to set up the player's own adventures within the game's sandbox environments. Visiting the game's first town, we set about tracking down the local headman, for clues as to where we could find our family's kidnappers. Never fear, a giant man is here. Oh, <laughs> giant man's forgotten the key to get off his horse. With the headman informing us that he knows of the gang's location, and to gather a group of locals to assist in taking on the threats of the roaming bandits, and to look out for a doctor who may also have been kidnapped, Taktos, as he carries with him an interesting artifact. After thanking the headman, we gather some locals and buy up some food for the journey ahead. Barreling after our first set of bandits on the horizon, we encounter our first taste of the game's battle combat, with our small gang of ragtag locals, led by the mighty Ralph himself, staring epically across the mist of the battlefield. Ordering our troops to charge, it's here for me at least where Bannerlord really starts to get interesting. As someone who didn't play the first entry in the series, I've often thought how cool it would be to command troops playing as the actual presence on the battlefield, as opposed to commanding en masse as a floating presence in the sky, as with most other strategy titles. Charging in after ordering our troops using the game's order system, and quickly dispatching our bandit foes felt great and epic even on this small scale, so who knows what kind of scenes we'll encounter as things develop. With our foes slain and one of our group clearly deciding to celebrate alone in his own private party, we march across the local area, catching up on the remaining troops and bandits and dispatching them in turn. With this pleasing Ralph into some disturbing facial expressions, and going some way to explain that one particular troop's sudden bout of social anxiety. After clearing the last of the three groups of bandits, we happen upon the Dr. Taktos, who, although looking disturbingly happy about the whole ordeal, has clearly been impacted by the experience, with the poor man barely able to speak. And they just came out of the brush. We were surrounded and outnumbered. Well, being outnumbered, of course you had no chance. But Taktos holds some vital information, leading us to the location of the bandit hideout, and giving us an opportunity to see another of Bannerlord's styles of engagement, hideouts being smaller scale encounters with a capped unit count, leading a group of men through the landscape to take out camps of enemies, playing more like a third person action title than its more strategy oriented larger scale battles. Ralph and his gang of course ransack the bandit hideout, all the way to their leader who offers to duel us to claim victory, foolishly overlooking the sheer size of our bandit blood soaked highly excitable hero. After getting more information on the whereabouts of our lost family, our brother sets off to find out more, leaving us to unleash ourselves upon the world, setting up our clan of champions loyal to the most praised of goblets. It's true. Where do you think I got this dope goblet? After which we receive a quest that covers essentially exploring the world to grow in strength, which is where the game truly opens up, with a multitude of options available for our next move. Being an RPG strategy blend, Bannerlord uses multiple avenues of progression while working through the game, both an in-depth character leveling system, including gearing as well as leveling associated with your clan as a whole, with additional progression tied to bulking out an army as well as lining your pockets with gold. 
Being more of a sandbox, growing in strength can be done in a variety of ways. Players could choose to level and utilize clever trade strategies to amass a fortune and hire the land's most fearsome fighters, or go in swords raised to clash with bandits and rivaling factions for their loot, and to take prisoners to later induct into their own forces. That of course working alongside the game's core plotline. Never look at me like that. Pl please stop looking at me like that. As for Ralph Fair, as we headed to one of the local settlements, he couldn't help but notice the temptation of the local arena, which was in town, and after signing up, found out offered quite a tasty reward, along with another chance to smash some skulls. The arenas in Banlord are quite self-explanatory, with a series of rounds with various weapon loadouts and team setups, until only two remain for the final showdown for the prize. A little on the easy side after spending a bit of time with the combat system, even on veteran difficulty, as we played here, but still a good way to break up the larger scale campaign progress while progressing through the game. If you find yourself enjoying the video, please consider dropping it a like and letting me know your thoughts down in the comments as it truly helps out small YouTubers like me. If you're a fan of RPGs or just looking for a laugh or two, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss an upload. Following our victory and accompanying disturbing celebration, we turn to the game's quests available from NPCs in towns and cities, rewarding gold and reputation. These range from more trading-focused quests to objectives more down Ralph Street, hunting down more troublesome gangs around the lands. And after a number of battles sporting the upper hand, Ralph's goblets encountered a group of deserters following a quest that were much more formidable in number, and with his brave soldiers took to the battlefield for a showdown. Whilst not exactly looking like a picture of confidence, Ralph, cleverly using his mount to his advantage, broke up the attacking forces, leaving his goblets to mow down the rest, and showcasing early on the importance of using both unit type and the game's environments to get the edge in battle, even if Ralph himself sometimes failed to make it through unscathed. We won! Great work, guys! After a number of quests and trips back to the arena, we took to another one of the game's more tutorial-feeling quests, hunting down local notable lords across the whole map, like an obsessive fan stalking their favorite streamers around VidCon, using the game's massively helpful encyclopedia, which grants the player a whole range of information around the world and its inhabitants, with each kingdom being made up of multiple smaller factions, each with their own set of lords and rulers. The lord's quest was a bit frustrating, when each lord is frequently moving around themselves while you travel around after them, but a useful way of getting out into the wider reaches of the map, to see the sights as well as the state of the current warring factions and their huge armies marching across the game's world. After an epic game of hide-and-seek and seeing such large-scale warfare, Ralph set about getting in on some of the action by presenting himself to the lord of the Vlandia kingdom, King Durthart with an offer to join his ranks as a mercenary, and with this track down the nearest Flanthian army to join in their current conflict with the Northern Empire, in a siege of one of the Empire's castles. Joining this siege, we get a chance to see what Bannerlord's battles are really about, with hundreds of units joining the fight sieging the castle in the dead of night, trebuchets firing and siege towers being pushed slowly towards the castle walls. The atmosphere created electric, and made all the better being right on the ground fighting alongside the troops, climbing the castle walls and emerging into a sea of rival soldiers, cutting a path through their ranks and ransacking their defences, as we win the day and with it a newly claimed castle for Vlandia. <laughs> oh, God damn it, Ralph, you're supposed to be looking cool. What occurred next was a grand campaign taking Ralph and his small goblet regiment across the entire map in a whole host of mind blowing combat engagements. With Ralph so excited at times he could hardly contain himself, as seen here going nipples first off the enemy's castle walls. <laughs> After a while, we reached clan level 2 unlocking the option to become a vassal for a faction, a step up from the mercenary and becoming truly part of the kingdom's ranks. Wanting to get the full experience, I cranked up the unit count even higher, and with it got a chance to be on the front line of battles consisting with up to 1,000 men, which as you can see, was an absolutely insane experience, slowly getting charge over larger groups while in combat for some insanely massive encounters, charging full speed into clashes with seas of enemy units strewn throughout the battlefield, playing as a single commander with boots on the ground was an incredibly enjoyable experience, and felt like nothing I'd played before, even if Ralph's enjoyment could seemingly change mid-battle, taking the better weapons and armor of my enemies for myself, and leveling up my skills during the campaign. The scale for me at least amplified massively by being present on the battlefield itself, of course leading to the odd defeat, but with it coming the opportunity to get an aerial view of the amazing scenes, as well as the ability to speed things up and get a look at what a medieval Black Friday may have looked like. Defeat does not always mean death, 
as settings around this can be configured to allow for the game to continue if the player falls, to move on to potential other family members or heirs in the event that the player character dies. And with that in mind, and with peace finally agreed, Ralph set off to find himself a suitor. Bannerlord's encyclopedia coming in handy once again to identify suitable candidates for a partner. And once tracked down, will need to be convinced before developing a relationship with a quite punishing set of multiple choice questions, impacted by the player's leveled attributes. Get one wrong and that love interest is locked out entirely. But once you pass the checks, the suitor's family can be approached to set up the big day. Or when it comes to Ralph, just the day. As after a number of failures, we get to see. Another of the game's companion systems works with clan companions, these being hired NPCs sporting a particular set of attributes to be utilized in a number of ways. Companions can be geared and set up to join you on the battlefield commanding groups of troops, or even sent out in a small force to act as a trading caravan to generate passive income, to go along with another passive income feature of purchasing workshops. Companions can be geared as well as leveled with their own strengths and weaknesses linked to their titles, and does add some strategy and replayability seeking out the best for each role. It was not long before Ralph's skills were acquired again, with another war beginning. But this time, as a well-respected vassal, he was pleasantly surprised when the Lords of Landia voted to grant Ralph and his goblets their own castle, and lay claim to the overthrown cities during the conflict, giving us a nice look at another of Bannerlord's mechanics and its settlement management system. Governors can be assigned from your clan to own settlements, as well as projects completed to upgrade the settlements with various bonuses, as well as making for a rather tasty form of income via taxation. With his rise to a notable lord of the realm, and now with his own slice of the kingdom, Ralph took a moment to take in his accomplishments on this journey. Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord for me is one of those games where you can plan on sitting down for an hour or two, then hours later wonder how it became 5. The process of going from zero to hero in this game is incredibly engaging with its sandbox style of rising to the top whilst getting a chance to get stuck into some unbelievable large-scale battles and sieges. The game features a crafting system also, to add to its more RPG elements, alongside its settlement management and questing, but overall I do feel like they'll be on the lighter side for some RPG fans, as a number of hours into the campaign can feel a little underdeveloped, but on the other side of things there is an absolutely massive modding community, and with some of the projects coming together following its full release, can only serve to add hundreds if not thousands of additional hours to players reaching past the base game's features. The AI the AI in the game can be a little frustrating choosing to attack a castle on the other side of the map when a stone's throw away from a friendly castle under siege, but Bannerlord also supports the ability to set up your very own kingdom, for those brave enough to take on the world's factions alone. Overall, if you don't fall in love with the chance to get boots on the ground in some mind-blowing medieval warfare, then Bannerlord will more than likely start off with a bang and lose its spark rather fast. But for those that enjoy the rush of battle in this much more personal-feeling way to conquer the land, standing side by side with your band of brothers, taking on the land's challenges face to face, then Bannerlord is simply an experience you cannot miss. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I'm keen to get your thoughts down in the comments. I want to give a massive shout out to the channel members who help in supporting the channel. If you're interested in joining as a channel member for all sorts of perks including exclusive videos, the info is down in the description. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, Jesus, calm down! Oh dear lord, what have I done?